Hey guys, welcome back. It's Todd Boniface here with Todd's Tech Tips, and today it's going to be a little show on how to install Windows 8 release preview and effectively Windows 8 itself. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need to want to go go to the Microsoft Store and download Windows 7 USB to DVD tool, which that allows you to create a bootable ISO image from a USB disk or a just a disk a disk CD if you want to go back to the 90s. And you also need a copy of Windows 8 Consumer Preview or Windows 8 Release Preview. Choose them wisely if you have a 64-bit machine, which is most of the machines nowadays that have over uh, 4 gig of RAM will benefit from this. If not, go with 32 gigabyte. And you just need those two things. After that, you install the Windows 7 USB to DVD tool and open that up. It'll just say, come up like in this window here, and it'll say step one to select the ISO image. You go to your Windows 8 release preview and double click the ISO image. Click next, and then it'll create the bootable USB device. You also have to say whether you want to use a USB disk or a disk itself. So that's kind of the hard work done and now you just have to wait for that to copy across. I'm using USB 3 so it isn't taking that long but it's... I don't know, my USB drivers are really weird. They're not full USB speeds in Windows 7. So Windows 8, of course, has native USB support, USB 3 support. That is why I'd like to copy across this and get it started. Although I do have this on this machine, but I'm looking to buy Windows 8 Pro. This one's for another machine. Also, you'll find the product key on Microsoft's download site, and this will be available until January 18th or 16th. And then after that, you have to buy Windows 8 um, Pro or Windows 8, just standard Windows 8. I'll make a video on what the difference is between each, ver between each version, but for now, I'll go out and check what I hate about Windows 8, and then soon I'll be doing about doing a video about what I love about Windows 8, and there is a lot. So I'll pause the video here and wait for the copying to finish, and then I'll be back on installing Windows 8. Okay, so after about... I don't know, a few minutes. The bootable disk has been finally completed and now I can just exit out of that, go to my computer and then see that Windows 8 is definitely there. And if I went to click setup now, it would run through and it would ask me if I want it would ask me if I wanted to do a clean install, which is what I don't want to do. Also here I could update the stuff so I can go online and install updates now. So um uh, I won't do that now. I'll install it on my other machine. I've got a little netbook here that I want to wipe that had a Hackintosh on it. So I'll cut to my camera and I'll do that for you. So now that we've copied our, made our USB disk or our CD, um, what we can do is we can go in and put the disk or the USB into our computer. So just plug it into a USB slot or your disk drive if you are using a disk. And what we're going to do is we're wanting the computer to boot from the USB. So to do this, when we click the power button, we're going to click F2 as soon as our BIOS logo starts up. Now our BIOS logo is the thing that starts up before the actual window starts. So this bit here, the Dell bit. <coughs> now all the BIOS is is the basic input and output settings so just the basic things that need your that you need for your computer to run so you'll see here that if I zoom in we have options here we've got I've got the USB storage at the top because um, I've already done this once and then we've got the hard drive down the bottom now this is the boot this is called the boot order now usually in BIOSes you'll have a key down the bottom, so for example mine is F5 to change the vault, change the um, the options, and you would just change it accordingly to make the USB disk or the CD, DVD, the top one. Next hit F10 or the option that'll allow you to exit, usually it's escape, and you have options here, exit saving with saving changes, exit discarding changes, exit load the setup defaults, 
this guy the changes and save the changes. So I'm going to say exit without saving the changes because I've already done this. And then your system will reboot into the new OS. Now this screen is very shiny. Hello. And that's not what I wanted to happen. Hold on. If I do this again, load it up, Dell logo, I'll zoom out a bit. And then usually you should see a message. Okay, hold on, why isn't this coming up? My mistake, guys, this is actually the disk, or the USB disk. It's just, I'm getting so used to seeing the Windows 8 startup now, it looks exactly the same. So this will go ahead and load up, and if you're running Windows 7, it would say Windows is loading the files. That just means it's loading it into the RAM to be accessed more quickly. And we see a blank screen, and then a blue screen. That's a good sign, which means that the installer is starting up. So this is all you are presented with, a window here, and it says to choose your language. So the language to install, the time and currency, the keyboard, and input layout. So once you go ahead and do that, I'm just going to click next for now. Um, just because I've done this before. And then, you have an option to repair your computer, which allows you to get into command prompt and copy across some files if you know how to do that. Um, or just install now. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and click install now. Now it just says setup is starting and that just loads the installer and enables you to partition the drive or wipe the drive as such. So this is where you could do a dual boot option if you preferred. Dual boot just means you can keep your old system with Windows 7 or your previous operating system and your new operating system which is of course Windows 8 or Windows 7. So here this is kind of irrelevant for most people, this is just because I got the full pro edition of Windows 8, I could choose whether or not my architecture was 64-bit or x86. So these are just the different versions of Windows 8. There are quite a few of them, but the main thing is you want to make sure that your computer is 64-bit compatible. That just means if you have over 4 gigs of RAM and your you have a desktop computer, not a little netbook like this thing, that would mean, most of the time, that would mean that your system is 64-bit ready. After you click next, it'll think about it for a bit, for a minute. <clears throat> Here we have the license agreement. Um, after we hit next, this is where it gets quite interesting. So, you could either do an upgrade, but an upgrade has a few tricks to it. An upgrade, you can only upgrade Windows if you have Windows 7 Ultimate. Say if you wanted, to, okay. Say if you wanted to upgrade to Windows 8 Pro, you wouldn't be able to do that if you were running Windows 7 Starter like I was beforehand. You would, however, be able to upgrade to it if you were running Windows 7 Ultimate or Windows 7 Professional. But because we just want to do a clean install, we want to remove everything off our computer, we want to start fresh, we're going to click Custom. Now this here is a drive table, and I could choose whether what, no, uh, I could choose what drive I wanted to install Windows 8 on, or I could format the drive, I could delete the drive, um, or I could create a new one if I had free space but I'm not going to do that. But So you would just click next, but because I've already done so, um, I'll continue on to the next bit. After which, this will just copy across the Windows files from the USB disk. And this is why I say that this would be so much more beneficial if I was running this on a, uh, a system with a USB 3.0 port, because it would copy across super, super fast and then it loads the files off the hard drive and installs Windows and all its features. Back when it finishes copying across. 
Okay, so it hasn't even started to install Windows yet, so it looks like it copies the files over. And I've taken out the USB, so USB's here. Nothing's plugged in. And it looks like it installs it just from the hard disk itself, which should be a lot faster than using USB 2 transfer speeds. Um, actually, anyway, it copies it across anyway, so it shouldn't be faster. But it's getting files ready for installation at the moment. That'll install everything and install the updates, and then the getting finished, I'm, I'm assuming, will just be adding in a user account and a computer name and password, etc. So I'll keep you posted. The time at the moment is 8 o'clock. Can't see that anyway. Um, yeah. 8 o'clock. 801. So I shall come back with you, and you can see the time that which what this finishes at. It should be around the same time as what Windows 7 took to install, so which is about half an hour. So we'll see. All right. So after putting in just my personal information, like my username and password, and that, it's come up with this. So just move your mouse in to any corner. So, I can't actually move my mouse at the moment. Can I press next? Nope. I'll just let this run through, and that should work. Um, it's just showing how to use Windows 8's corners features, really. I mean, nothing new if you've used it before. So, it's finished now. Are oh, we getting your PC ready? This should take a few minutes. And this is this nice, like, scrolling color effect thing that's going on here. Looks really nice. Um... I really don't know what it's doing right now, I'm guessing just checking for drivers, so, yeah. So now after that's all finished, everything is set up, everything is all good to go, you just have to enter in your wireless password, and you're off, ready to be using Windows 8. Now one thing I noticed with this laptop, the Dell Mini, the Dell Inspiron Mini 10, watch what happens when I try and open a Metro app. The resolution isn't enough, so Windows 8 requires a resolution of, I think it's 1024 by 700, or 768, at least a HD screen to be able to run a Metro app. This laptop, of course, has a resolution of, I think, 1024 by 600. That means that I can't run Metro apps, but, of course, if we go to the... Oh, if we go back to the desktop, we can run everything fine. So, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you did. And sorry for it being so long, but we are installing an OS here. Uh, so if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget to thumb this video up. And don't forget to check out my website, www.toddstechtips.com. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.